Hello, I'm Anne Kennedy and I'm going to show you how to make this lovely apron dress from a Gasipium apron dress kit. It's printed on really beautiful fabric and it's printed on 100% fair trade organic cotton velour. All the pieces you need to make the kit are printed ready to cut out. You get matching sewing thread, pure cotton, and an instruction sheet to help you make it. Lay your kit out as flat as possible on the table, and it's a good idea to iron out the creases first. And the other thing that's really important is to have a sharp pair of scissors that you don't let the kids cut paper with. It makes life much easier. Now the first thing you have to do is to decide the size you're making. The biggest size this kit will make is a 16 and you cut it on the um, outside solid line and that's the one I'm going to do. There are other dotted lines for a 10, 12 and 14. I'm just going to familiarise you with all the pieces. We have the front of the apron dress, the back of the apron dress, the patch pocket and two straps there and there. Then there's the belt pieces and the facing for the front neck and the facing for the back neck. Last but not least, there's the little purse. That's the strap for the purse and at that far end are the two, the purse front and back. Right, now I'm going to start cutting the kit out. This is good fun. Sharp scissors really do work a treat. It's obviously useful to stick to the line as much as possible, but it's all going to disappear inside in seam allowances, so it doesn't have to be completely immaculate. Once you've cut out all the pieces, the first thing to do is to neaten edges so that it doesn't fray um, when it's washed. Um, but you only need to neaten the edges that are going to be open. All around here is going to be faced and enclosed and top stitched. So you want to neaten the long sides and the long edges of their front and back facing. The neatening process you can either do by hand, by overstitching along the seam, or you can do it as I would prefer on the sewing machine because it's quicker. You want to set your sewing machine to a zigzag stitch, use it at the widest width, which is four on mine, put the piece in and away you go. It's well worth snipping the ends off as you go. It saves a lot of tidying up later on. Right, now before we start sewing, I just want to explain about the right side of the fabric, the printed side, and the wrong side, because we'll talk about that an awful lot as we go through. We're gonna make the straps next. We want to fold them in half lengthways, right sides together and pin. They're going to be sewn together with a one centimeter seam which will apply to all facings and edges of pockets but the sort of structural seams, the side seams, are all one and a half centimeters. I think it's a really good idea to pin the both ends of the seam first otherwise sometimes the fabric can creep and you get to the other end and it's overlapping by a sort of centimetre or something, which means one side of the seam is stretched and one side is puckered. It doesn't look very attractive. And the other thing about pinning is if you always have your pins running in the same direction, they're very easy to take out while you're sewing. The other really important thing about um, seams is it's a very good idea to do a few stitches of back stitch at the beginning and end because otherwise your sewing will all come unraveled. And a little bit of back 
stitch at the end. Pull it two. Take the other. Right, now we're going to press the seam open and then finally turn the strap right side out. It's really important to use your iron as you sew rather than just at the end um, because it'll make everything look much neater and flatter and much more professional. It's really important to do as much ironing as possible on the wrong side and the inside of the garment because um, velour and velvets and needle cords all mark um, quite badly if you're ironing them hard on the right side. You'll get your seams showing through. You've probably noticed this when you iron your clothes. So if you do as much as possible on the inside, it'll look better on the outside. You push the seam allowance to either side of the seam line and press. Right, now we're going to turn it to the right side out. Sometimes it's helpful to have a blunt-ended instrument to help you turn it the right side out, as it can be a bit tricky. And we nearly have the right side of the strap. There we are. Now it's right side out. You line up the seam in the centre of the back and then give it a good press before top stitching. Right, now we're going to do two lines of top stitching, one down either side of the strap, half a centimetre in. Now you make the belt in exactly the same way. It's obviously about three times as long and it's a bit more of a struggle to turn it inside out. But there's one small difference. Um, with the straps, both ends are sewn into the facings of the dress. With the belt, you've got a raw end. So we'll sew just across the end. And a little bit of back stitch at the end. To make it neater when you sew it, when you turn it the right side out, just snip a small amount off the corner. We've got to turn this long bit of belt to the right side out. I'm going to try a different method on this. I'm going to start with turning the end in and then trying the old knitting needle trick again. We'll just have to see what happens. Now, here you have your sewn thing. <laughs> Demonstrator thoroughly stuck. <laughs> We're nearly there. The trick is obviously not to bunch it up too much. There we are. Ah, now we've just got to poke the corners out and then we're going to press and top stitch. Get my trusty needle back again. You can use the slightly sharper end for this, but you've got to be very gentle or you'll push through. There we are. And 